In today's video, I'm breaking down some of the secrets behind GameSense and Apex. If you can learn and implement some of these tactics, you will be able to not only outsmart your opponents more often, but also just be in better positions overall to win. So let's get into it. Now in this first example, we're taking a hectic fight over at Fight Night. And if you've ever fought here before, you know one team can quickly turn into three or four. So I send out an EMP, but when we look to follow up off of it, it looks like the enemies had dropped. We get some decent damage on them, but then immediately a fuse ult comes down and I recognize shots from carrier and then all hell breaks loose. There was apparently a team that trailed us into fight night and they do knock one of my teammates. Now that we're surrounded by this fusel, it's going to make it really tough for me to do anything here, especially since my cover is being blown with the wall hack that comes with this fusel. My teammate calls out that one person is pushing from low ground and I can't see them, but I do see his ping and I'm able to shoot a little bit. I'm playing in their knockdown, trying to use some bit of cover and I am able to get a knock on this pathfinder. Throwing my drone out here was really crucial because it allowed for me to get some bits of information without having to be too exposed. See, because we're stuck low ground, the player on high ground can just peek over at their leisure and do whatever they want. After downing one, I then am looking for their teammates, so I decide to start thirsting to see if that draws one of them out. And shortly after, the wraith appears. Now, luckily, she had a shotgun, and so there was some space between her and I, so I was able to down her before she was able to knock me. I go back to thirsting Pathfinder so that I can get this armor swap, and I was expecting the third player to actually come from low ground, but turns out Fuse was still inside. He hits me with a knuckle cluster. It's withering away most of my armor, so I try to shoot back what I can, and I elect to pop a medkit. Really just trying to stay calm here because I have the drone out and I can recognize if Fuse wants to push out of this doorway. At this time, Fuse has one knocked teammate, the Wraith. If he wants to res the Wraith and he doesn't do it quick enough, then I can stop it and basically force a 1v1. So I elect to heal and as soon as I progress, I hear Fuse start the res. Of course, as I get closer, he drops it. Now watch as I swing open this door. Fuse is far from his knocked teammate. I elect to strafe to my left to break line of sight in the event that this spray and this exchange doesn't end up in my favor. You can see I crack him for 144. I break line of sight for just a millisecond and then I repeat and I down him. When a player has strafed so far away from cover, while the opposite player has utilized cover, that player that is not around cover is basically at the whim of what that enemy decides to do. And you can see, as I broke line of sight really quickly, as I swapped weapons, Fuse was just stuck there and I did this so quickly, there was no chance he was going to win that. The key here was just staying calm, using my tactical ability, and not panicking despite being surrounded by a fusel. One player was going to push up, and he did. Luckily, I was able to get that knock and then just progress forward. I did not like my positioning, so having me reposition to high ground once I down the pathfinder and start to thirst him was risky because in hindsight, I didn't have a ton of cover from the wraith and the fuse who were inside the sliding doors, but I figured if I was to facilitate anything, it would have started with me thirsting because those players would react to that and hopefully try to stop what I was doing. Now on this next fight as conduit, we had just finished a fight and we were getting third partied by a team in this tunnel. Having an L-star here, it was kind of difficult to see what was going on along with the Mirage ultimate and then Conduit used her jammers. I didn't really like how this fight was going because I knew if we turned this corner we wouldn't have any cover so I get stuck in her ultimate and instead of trying to shoot them out I know I need to create more space because I need some time. If I create space then I start to have some options here but if I just stay and try to shoot that out one of those guys will shoot me in the back. Remember I'm down on numbers here so what's really important is that I wait and see if one guy is up ahead. Mirage was and I looked at Mirage from a vantage point that really benefited me. He didn't know exactly where I was. I had established some cover on this slant here, downed him, and then popped a battery from the damage that I did take. However, I knew a second player was going to come out rather quickly. So subtly, I break line of sight and I shift to the left so that if Mirage was pinging, the Revenant doesn't necessarily know where I am. You see how I catch him off guard? I do land the first spray, but he's in ult. I once again break line of sight very briefly, seeing if he will continue continue to shoot, forcing his reload because I have an L star. I know that if I calculate it correctly, I will never have to reload with this weapon. However, with Revenant being in his ult, it's going to take extra damage to down him. And you can see here, I'm successful in doing so. Instead of pushing up forward at this point, I eliminate their leverage by thirsting this player, knowing at this point that Conduit didn't push out with Revenant. So most likely she went for the revive on Mirage. I used that to my advantage here. I initiate my tactical so that I get some passive shields. I down her 
water while that's going on. Mirage is getting passively shielded. He accidentally hits a jump pad. And instead of re-challenging it after I get low, I elect to use my ultimate and pop a battery. I don't go for the Phoenix because I want to cut the time in half. If Mirage goes for the res during that 10 second Phoenix kit, a lot can change. So I know I have him beat altogether if I can just get this battery and tag back in. I can hear at this point he's going for the revive and I just know in the rough direction where it is. So I'm kind of spraying and I get both of them. The key to this fight is really simple. It's just establishing some space so that I have those options. If I create a little bit of a run on these players, they will start the chase and through that chase, they will get split up, whether that's by two seconds, five seconds or 10 seconds. It's important that I eventually have a spot in my mind where I'm going to look to turn and burn from. This worked out very well in my favor. I tried to take as little damage as possible, but you could see in that last exchange trying to kill the Mirage, it got a little close, but I was able to break line of sight, always try to establish a little bit of cover at my disposal that I can quickly access and then use abilities whenever possible to affect the fight in my favor as well. Now in this third example as Ballistic, I had just wrapped up a fight and I had killed one player, but the other player died to another team. I didn't like my positioning, so I started to take the zip line up. I knew one player would probably chase and we have a, I think Valkyrie here. I hit her with my smart pistol. I down her from a better spot than would have been before, but I never heard her teammate come up on my other side. So I quickly drop down. I go for the thirst because I don't have shields. And then I grab some light because I know I'm low. He drops right then. I get to the door and I block it. I don't panic here. If he wants to kick, I will pre-aim while he's going to kick. And then I move. Once I move, I see him cut through to the other side. So I use my ballistic ult. I utilize cover. He's out in the open. I get a good spray. And because I have an RE, I just slide in, close the gap and wrap this fight up. The perk here is that I had my ult going. I have this hammer point RE. It's a great close range gun. It's not going to be good at some distance if he decides to play cover after I already crack him, but I know that the damage will be amplified to his health since it has the hammer point. So I just slide out of my cover and I push him. I think this is a great example of just stalling, separating the enemies, not panicking, getting that quick armor swap whenever possible, and honestly just making this guy have to make a ton of tough decisions. Because once I drop, he has to decide which shoot he wants to drop down to. How quickly can he get here? Well, I drop first, so I'll beat him there. And then I play the door. That makes him have to make another decision. Does he kick? Does he go around? Right? And all this time, I am just ultimately in control here. And he ends up making a ton of little mistakes that I make him pay on. Now, this game, obviously, I was alone. My teammate had died off drop. And now we're into basically territory where I have to approach every fight as a solo. But I don't ever try to give that away unless it's mandatory. What I mean by that is I never try to expose myself as, yeah, I'm just alone whenever I don't have to. So in this moment, you know, I've got a guy pushing me from over here and then a guy I could hear got closer. That's who I just hit with my smart pistol. That ends up being this revenant on this, you know, wall. And what I do is I wait to see if he peeks again, because if he does, I know that the second player is so far back that I could close the gap to him in time. So I get a good damage spray on him. I use my ult. I miss on the smart pistol. He revenant ults. I hit a nice reload behind cover. But yeah, right there, it's just about playing off the edge that I have. I quickly decide to bat knowing that the second player has to make a tough decision. Does he want to push me or does he want to play for the res? Because of how far away he was from the Revenant, I feel like he'll go for the Revenant first. So I climb the wall to see if I can get some more info. Now I miss on this spray, but now I'm like, all right, I got to get closer. This guy seems like he's scared and I'm playing with momentum here. I get a huge spray on him and then swap to the hemlock to finish it off. A duo should never give a solo enough space to do that to them. And ultimately I just made them pay for the separation that they continued to try to play against me with, right? They had tons of opportunities to put together that I was alone, but I never acted like I completely was because I provided presence from a distance. I kept outputting damage to them and they eventually had two different schools of thought. One was like, yeah, let's get closer to this guy. And the other player clearly thought, well, I'll just pepper him from a distance. So I recognized their scheme and found an exploit in it. Now, moving down the line to this last fight here, it's just me and this last team. I know it's a full team. It's a full duo here. At this point, because of how much time has passed and because of how many times we exchanged gunfire, they knew I was alone and they were playing pretty passive. So I know I have to move with the zone here. They are already trying to establish some positioning. They're going to try to play around this tree and they're split holding, making my angle not that good. So I'm thinking to myself, the next damage spray I get, I am going to push on the right because I feel like I like the cover better on my right. I could have gone left. I just didn't have as good of a read as where the guy was on the left. So I didn't feel as confident 
confident with that. I pop my ult. I get a decent spray on the conduit. I feel like that's worth going off of. I continue to spray. I shift further to the right to try to break the LOS of the guy on the left. And I'm just full court pressing up ahead, trying to find the conduit. At this time, they should be linked up. And now the fight is going to get a little dicey here. Conduit hasn't healed, but this other player, because I had played so much cover, was like, oh, I'll just flank him. I'll just push this guy. You know, I just need to get to him. And I made them pay for that. So I shift on the left here. I have my smart pistol out. I miss because I didn't know which way she was coming from. I get another good spray on the conduit. I'm like, all right, is she going to repeat? She doesn't. So I elect to use my shield battery here. The conduit thinks about climbing up. I'm a little late on this spray, but at this point, my ult has gone away. She had never healed. And that's obviously a rookie mistake. You know, you got to use downtime to heal. And if you don't, I'm going to make you pay for it. So will many other players. Look, when you're alone, it can be tough to decide and to decipher how do you push this squad. But ultimately, once you get some damage or once you make a quick read, try to be fast with it. Because ultimately, the less this team can create a plan around what you're doing, the more likely you have a chance to surprise them, spook them, whatever. And that will usually wind up causing them to make a ton of mistakes along the way. So whether you're playing as a solo with no teammates, you're playing with your friends as a coordinated squad, or you're playing with randoms, you want to try to make fast reads. And you also want to try to find when a team is not playing close enough together so that they can make you pay for what they're trying to do. If you notice separation that could favor you, try to pounce on it because you may not get that opportunity again, especially if they start to develop a better strategy around what you and your teammates are trying to do to them. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out the best and worst ultimates in season 19. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.